I'd see him sitting on that couch all day long, just staring at that Hollywood hogwash. Our favorite show was Hollywood Hogwash. Everyone, welcome to another episode of Hollywood Hogwash. I'm Andrew Pisano, along with Josh Reese and Aaron Rosa. If you're listening or watching this on the 4th of July, then happy Independence Day. Hey. That's right. It's not just an American holiday. It is a worldwide holiday. Okay, and you're jumping I, the gun and botching the line. Wow, wow, wow. And unlike anybody else on this podcast, I showed up prepared with my shirt of... George Washington giving a stone cold stunner to the British. <laughs> I'm all so set. Great. Mine's an Astro. Oh, that's the, that's that's so great. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah that's, that's good. You definitely got the best shirt on. I got this uh, new Last of Us T-shirt. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Yeah. I don't so know how, I like that. I don't know how American it is, but it's awesome. Well, the show takes place in America, so sure. Yeah, and Boston, no less. The the cradle of America. Yes. Um. Well, well only the first part. Well, yeah, only the. First only that's the beginning. Fine. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anyways, uh, happy 4th of July. To celebrate, we are watching the most American movie of all time. Easily. Uh, Team America, World Police. No, Independence <laughs> oh. Day, Oof. starring Jeff Goldblum, Bull Holman, and Will Smith before he was a shithead. Holy shit. This was we, way before he slapped Chris Rock. We've this got, is peak Will Smith. This is... Not only peak Will Smith, like in between Bad Boys and Men in Black, yeah. but also peak Jeff Goldblum, like two years after Jurassic Park. Yes. Yes. It's good stuff. It's a great movie. We're going to uh, break it down in full detail later. I've seen it so many times. I know we've all seen it a bunch of times. Right. What was great was I was about 10 years old when this movie came out. And now my son is 10 years old, and we all watched it together, and uh, he loved it. So it Did, was really cool. There was a moment I'll talk about later, but I was, I was really happy about yeah. this one particular moment. Right. It was great. Yeah, I remember when this came out. Like, you, you probably have similar memories. Maybe you too, Josh. I remember, you know, I would go to the theaters back then, and then one day I went in, and there was this theatrical poster, and it was just the giant ship, and uh -huh. it was just... ID four. Right. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. I've got to see whatever this is. Oh my and like God. the trailer of them blowing up the White House was yes. just like, holy shit, you yes. know. Yes. Game the, changer. Yeah. The balls to do that. Really fucking cool movie. Like like the best popcorn movie ever, you know? Easily. No, this was Easily. summer blockbuster. You mm -hmm. know? This was the definition of it. You yeah. know, you go out and see this. You see it two, three times in the theater. It even yeah. came out on July 4th. Yeah. Really and, it was right, and it was right during the peak of these movies, too. Like, those 90s, like, yeah. action summer popcorn movies. Yes. Like, this is one of the best of them. Oh, yeah. It's funny because uh, last, last 4th of July on Hogwash, we started the show off by playing President Whitmore's speech mm -hmm. to get ourselves all pumped up for the uh, podcast. And I don't remember what we reviewed that week, but we were like, yeah, we need... We need to review Independence Day. <laughs> well, the day has finally come a year later. Yes. That's right. Independence Day. But first, we have to thank some new patrons. Mm. Uh, so thank you to Joey Cage, John Surface, Adam Holmes, Jules Galloway, Chris Foreman, Anthony Flores, and Ronnie Screamer. So Ronnie thank Screamer you. Ronnie Screamer joined? Way to go. I don't know who Ronnie is, but thank you. <laughs> I recognize pretty much all these names from the uh, What's Wrong With Wrestling Patreon as well. So thanks for uh, doubling up here. I uh, really appreciate that. Is it because we did a bracket? I it's, feel like it's because we did a bracket. It's I think it's bracket. because we're starting to catch our stride as a podcast. We're starting to grow. You know, the numbers are getting strong. The, uh, the, 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 the army of the Hollywood hogwash is starting to build. It's you know? true. You know, it's The numbers true. are going up because we're doing a lot of movies that people love. The Batman Returns uh, response was great. Mm -hmm. but a lot gonna, of people love that movie. But we're going to try to do another bracket quicker. Because the last one we did, there were so many clips. It took a lot of time to put together. Yeah, we did the best TV intro of all time bracket. Go check it out at patreon.com slash Hollywood Hogwash. It's only $3 a month. You can cancel any time. Give it a try. And if you want to stick around, we're also doing uh, Secret Invasion on Disney+. Plus. Oof. <laughs> 
the, now which that, hasn't been great, but, but maybe it'll get better. We'll see. But it's still a big Marvel show. That might not be a selling point for people that have actually seen Secret Invasion. But just hang with us. We've got a lot more content. I'm anyways. I'm holding out hope because we might see some Super Scrolls uh-huh. doing some crazy shit. So we'll see. I'm holding out hope. That would be nice. That it'll get better. Afterwards, we're going to be doing Ahsoka a few weeks after Secret Invasion ends. So that's coming in August. And that, that's, looks, and we, that looks really good. That's going to be awesome. We still could even double back to do Righteous Gemstones. I mean, the possibilities are endless, guys. Josh yep. is really keyed in on Gemstones. Well, I want to watch it, saying. too. It's really great. It's, it's a funny it's show. Really I like good. it. Yeah. I'm looking forward. Have you watched any of it yet, Josh? Of no. season three? No, I want to wait. You're going to wait. wait. Okay, yeah. Same here. All right. So again, you could join patreon.com slash Hollywood Hogwash. Now let's get to the news and rumors, aka the Hollywood Hogwash. Well, we have our new Superman. Did you guys see this? Oh, right. I did. Yes, 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 yes. Yep. Uh, James Gunn has cast uh, David uh, Corrin Sweat to play the Man of Steel. Who are I knew that was coming. Uh, I'm going to yeah. be honest. He looks a little bit like Henry Cavill. Okay. He, he looks like the great value version of Henry Cavill. Well, you got to look a certain way if you're going to play Clark Kent. Oh, no. Yeah. Not I mean, the, that's true. Not the best name. Like Henry Cavill. Yeah, that's a Superman name. David Corenswit. I mean, Henry uh, Cavill was uh, pretty much an unknown when he was cast to play Superman. Yeah, but good name, good chin. Like, good chin. Good, it, it, what is this, baseball? <laughs> he's got sense. a good face. Yeah, I think he could hit 40 home runs a year. Uh, but he's basically an unknown. Uh, he also cast uh, Rachel Brosnan to play Lois Lane. Brosnan? He, yeah, she's from that uh, that marvelous Ms. Maisel show, Yeah, Ms. Maisel show. Yeah. She's the star of that show. Right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Oh, okay. But I again, I haven't Maisel. seen yeah. I, I haven't really seen anything from either of them. Uh but that's usually how it works, you know, when you ca- you know, it's usually an unknown actor to save some money in the beginning. Right. You yeah. Know, this could and end also up being like, a great deal. A lot of pretty much every big name actor has played a superhero at this point. So to to make soup, you know, to cast uh someone who's already played like a Marvel hero before to play Superman would kind of, you know, it's just kind of lame. So it's it's good that they're doing new actors. We'll see how this guy does. But I have faith in James Gunn. Yeah, faith. And you're right. You know, it is a, a completely different, fresh take. I mean, like, you're probably going to see very few, uh, you know, crossovers, you know, guys let's, that have played different movies. Let's see. I mean, he has said that he's going to have people from Guardians of the Galaxy be in Superman Legacy. So uh, I can imagine. His brother, his, his, his wife, you know. <laughs> uh, maybe. Um, yeah, we need to have some faith because I mean, even I mean, going back as far as Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. was like a failed uh-huh. drug addicted. You know, this guy's Iron Man, and now, yeah. like now, it's obvious. But right, we'll see. Uh, yeah, let's see if he could finally make Superman interesting because uh, Superman's always been boring in all these movies. Even if you like some of the Superman movies, that's fine. But his character has always been boring. Let's see if they can make him interesting for a change. I think he was interesting in Man of Steel, but I did agree s- to disagree. I did see that in this universe, apparently, that there's already going to be superheroes. So it's not Superman is not going to be the first hero in this universe, or, or I guess in this movie. There's okay. gonna be, it's going to be a world with you know already living. Uh, well, but guys. again, if the, well, you know, we saw the Flash. If they're keeping some of them, I'm still trying to understand how any of this is going to make any sense. Because, like, they're rebooting with, with this new cast, but Gal Gadot's still going to be there as Wonder Woman? No, no, no. Which, she's uh, just going to be there for one scene. <laughs> yeah, just, that's it. Just for one scene. <laughs> She'll make her cameo. Uh, yeah, we got to see what they decide to do with the whole Flash thing, you know. Very curious. Because the Flash, uh, yeah. You know, if you didn't see it, you didn't see it yet. I don't want to spoil anything, but we all know what happened. So right. we'll see how they explain everything. Also, uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny only made $60 million domestically in its opening weekend. Uh, Not good. The show I was in, I was, me and my wife were two of five people in the theater, I think. And when did you see it? Like Friday? It was like Friday afternoon, to be fair, but but still. Well, it also, you know, uh, maybe it's also because that theater sucks. 
That is a shit. We have the greatest ass ass movie theater. theater of all time, and now it's one of the worst movie theaters of all time. I don't know how it's still open. I guess like because it is a Regal, Regal's just keeping it open, even though that 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 theater's got to be losing money. That theater was like a Dave and Buster's meets like the best sports bar there. It, it was looked amazing. like a casino. We were like, the only thing missing yes. here are blackjack tables. Yes, it was like a fucking Vegas casino. No, yes. It was like it the fucking like Bellagio or something. It was no. great. Yeah, it looks like that, but it's empty. That's that is the empty. Yeah, for sure. It's empty now. So I guess with the numbers, I guess we're definitely not getting an Indy 6. And especially since this is his last Indy movie. I'm surprised right? Harrison Ford is still doing all of this. You know, he's in his 80s now. I'm surprised he even still wants to do yeah, this shit. He's the probably just that, bored. Yeah, the fact that he did Indy 5, the fact that he's going to be in this upcoming Captain America movie. Right. It's like, why aren't you retired, man? It was $130 million globally, so yeah. And the movie costs like $300 million, I think. Ooh, I'm going to have a hard time so, making that back. Yeah. Maybe people are starting to like come Realize around. No, no, no. <laughs> people are starting to like uh, get sick of the nostalgia. It, they're it starting to not, you know, that or get sick of the sequels. But like, still, that's what this it is. is. It's nostalgia. Maybe people are starting to finally get sick of nostalgia. But then again, they're also not going to the theaters when something new is coming out. Yeah. Well, that's so. what I'm saying. It's like at, at a certain point, like we all know all these theaters, they're trying to bet on the sure thing and just do sequels and reboots and yeah. shit. But at a certain point, when you do part three, part four, part five, Eventually, fans are gonna get sick. I mean, it's getting that way with Marvel now. You know, it used to be Marvel, you'd go for the big superhero movie, and now people are like, meh, Uh, Ant Man. Ant Man, (laughs) no, I think I'm good. Miss, uh, uh, what's the next one coming out? The the Marvels. Marvels. I think I'm gonna pass. I'm I'm good. Pass. Yes. I'm good. But Aaron's the only one that's of us that saw Indiana Jones Five, and uh, you said you uh, you didn't hate it, right? You kind of liked it. It was better than four. They did some better fan service in it. Um, I mean, it's it was obviously never going to touch the first three, but it's a better ending than four. I'll say that. Alrighty, is I never a, even saw four. Is it a spoiler to say if Short Round was there? Because I was curious if Short Round was was in it. I don't want to spoil anything okay. for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. All right. All right. Also, uh, in an interview with IGN, John Favreau, creator of The Mandalorian, revealed that Din Djarin was never meant to become the ruler of Mandalore. He said, if you notice from the first time Din Djarin uses the dark saber, it's heavy for him. Right. Even the armorer tells him that. Right. Right. And then uh, what's her face is just able to wield it ne- willy nilly, you know, when she beats uh, Din Djarin for the uh, for the dark saber. I don't know. That whole that whole plot line was kind of confusing to well, be she honest. She never beat Din Djarin for the light. He or gave he it gave to it her. to her and then she just could wheel it. She wheel just kind of willy nilly. Got it on a technicality. Right. But yeah, she was just fucking shit up immediately. Whereas I yeah. think this is I think what he's saying here is a retcon because like the first season, it was Pedro Pascal. Then pretty much after that, he's was just been doing voiceover stuff and he's not taking his helmet off anymore because he's not in, he's not there. Mm-hmm. He's just doing voiceover, so he might. It's basically a cartoon. So then they were like, "Well, if he's not gonna be here, then maybe we'll just make you know what's her face the 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 leader." I just thought about it. So I feel like they changed that later. The entire last season of the Mandalorian was just to uh, just so that Pedro Pascal would never take a take off his helmet because he had to go back to Mandalore. Yeah. to get bathed and. Right. I don't know. It just kind of makes me laugh thinking about it now. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of sad. I mean, you know, season three was a big letdown. Man, I don't have yeah. faith for season four either, especially Man. with Pedro Pascal not being there. I mean, it was interesting when he would take his helmet off, like the episode where him and Bill Burr. Oh, my God. Like we're, we're dressed up as stormtroopers or something. Not right. stormtroopers, but similar to that. But yeah, right. that was when they were breaking episode. in into that. I think that uh, was my favorite episode where, where Bill Burr has his face turned there. Yeah. Yeah. That was the best. He has episode that monologue and everything. Yeah. yeah, that was great. Mm-hmm. That was my favorite episode. Well, I'm just I'm not interested in much that Disney's doing nowadays anyways. Right. Yeah. What do you have, Josh? Uh, well, speaking of Disney, uh, Daredevil stuntman shared some quotes about upcoming Marvel projects. Uh, Chris Brewster, a veteran Marvel stuntman who's worked on a bunch of different Marvel projects, 
uh, was on the Azuku Unscripted podcast and shared that uh, the execs are far from pleased with Echo. Oh, well, there, yeah, I've heard rumors about that as well, that they're saying that Echo is uh, almost as bad as She-Hulk, which, yes. oh, my God. Oof. Uh, I, I always get the word of mouth. I heard they were going to Batgirl it, Echo is what Yeah, I know. I, oh, I, I bet wow. you they are. I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I really think that's going to happen. I don't think it's going to come out. Apparently, they're doing reshoots right now, and they're still playing on, on airing <sighs> it per him. But yeah, but it was supposed to come out this year and it got pushed back. Mm-hmm. Can you fucking imagine going through a whole production like that and just yeah. they're not even going to put your movie out? Shut it right. down! Shut it down! Holy this is shit. garbage! This is garbage! What a punch to the ego that is! <laughs> we Jesus. just spent one hundred thirty million dollars. Shut down. Uh, he also shared some thoughts about the upcoming Daredevil, and it is kind of depressing. Uh, they really, truly don't want it to be anything like Marvel, Netflix, Daredevil. So nobody that worked on the original series, other than the cast that they're bringing back, is coming back. And I mean that uh, just some truly wonderful people. Uh, I think I think this is Marvel's. I think Marvel's making a big mistake, but they're gonna do what they're gonna do. Yeah. Why would you want to make something similar to one of the best TV shows there's ever been? Yeah, he also Jesus. had another quote just about how they made a Daredevil a cartoon and She-Hulk, pretty much. It'll be interesting, I mean, true. because we know that, I mean, Secret Invasion is, uh, like, basically TVMA, I mean, or TV-14. You can tell that it's they're TV 14. trying to do something different, but by doing something different, they they just went boring. We'll that, see. I mean, John Bernthal's returning as the Punisher, so... That, sure. sh- that show was so good. I, I always I always thought Daredevil as a character was just a bitch. Yeah. And that show, it made me like Daredevil as a character. Right. Yeah. yeah. Man. Uh, the only other thing I got, I thought this was kind of interesting uh, for the upcoming Barbie movie. Oh, uh, Mattel president Richard Dixon flew all the way to London to argue with Margot Robbie and Greta Ger- Gerwig over a Barbie scene. Uh, the, both the duo what? shared in an interview with Time Magazine. Uh, according to the story, Gerwig and Robbie convinced Dixon to keep the scene in the film by performing it live on set. What so scene? That he could, what? He, they didn't share because it would be a spoiler. What? Is but it there, a sex scene? What I don't know. They said that it was an off-brand scene. Is it like her and Ken take off their clothes and then like Ken's like, where's my dick? It could be. <laughs> it could be. They said, it's an, they said it was an off-brand Mattel scene. But apparently seeing it live changed, changed the uh, Mattel, Mattel brands. What happened? Did Ryan didn't Gosling just whip his dick out and be like, imagine this wasn't here? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Are Maybe they bo- I don't know, but they're kind of they're kind of uh, uh, cornering this movie as a people who hate Barbies. This is the movie for you. Yeah, it's, I don't think it would be. F- I don't think it would be that fun to make fun of this, make no. fun of the movie on hogwash. But it's been lazy marketing because they've said if you don't like Barbie, this movie's for you. If you like Barbie, this movie's for you. Well, that's not no. no yeah, no. I kind of feel like. The whole Oppenheimer and Barbie thing coming out the same weekend, I feel like is a plan for both studios because one can yeah. easily have moved. But I think they're like, you know, people will go. People that go see Barbie might then get swayed to also see Oppenheimer and vice versa. And right. maybe we could really bring people going back to the theaters. Could be. Back then, like uh, in, you know, uh, before COVID in summertime, Multiple movies would come out the same weekend. Right. Sometimes like three movies. Three movies three would all come out the same yeah. weekend. They would compete against each other. And the thing is, they would all do really good. Yeah. Like, you know, if people wanted to see them, like they would all do really good. Yeah. You just have a weekend at the movies. You'd go to right. the movies twice in a weekend. And you know what's been kind of funny is from day one, since we knew that both of these movies were coming out on the same day, it's felt like a joint marketing campaign. Yeah, it feels like the two of them have been kind of. That's what I'm saying. It seems like uh, it seems like they've conspired. Yeah. Uh, The real question is, what's going to do better? Oppenheimer. Ooh, that's no. Yeah, you're right. Barbie. 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 Probably. Barbie. I think. Yeah. Like, I mean, we're going to be seeing Oppenheimer, but right. Yeah, Barbie's for sure going to make more money. I think so. I mean, Christopher Nolan's fucking great, but I mean, this movie doesn't have Batman in it. Barbie might going to be a three-hour drama. (sighs) You know, that's a tough sell for the average American. Sure. Oppenheimer might get the win in week two. 
But like his movies haven't done as well since COVID. You know, Tenet came out like basically during COVID. Well, nothing's done so as well since really COVID tough. except yeah. for like well, Spider-Man. Spider-Man movies. and Super yeah. Mario, a few right. movies, yeah, but most not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's gonna be interesting. So that's pretty much all I got. I thought it was kind of interesting. Yeah. You know. Uh last thing I have is uh just uh RIP to Alan Arkin. Oh, passed away right. at the age that's of eighty nine. He had heart problems. He's been in a lot of great stuff. That's sad. Uh very lovable guy. A lot of people said uh nice things about him. Like my my standout Alan Arkin scene was that one part from the uh, the Get Smart uh-huh. re- remake he did where they drove through some shit and he's like holy shit holy shit a swordfish like it almost got him through the face nice oh, he was in Edward Scissorhands okay interesting yeah he's he, been he, in a lot of stuff a lot of I stuff. mean he's eighty nine years old wow. but no I was just trying to remember some of the movies that he had been in yeah okay all right. Let's talk Independence Day. ID4. ID4. I said, uh, hey, guys, we're watching ID4. And Josh said, oh, we're going to see Indiana Jones? Come on. Yep. You could see how that I could make that mistake. I could. Yes. <laughs> That's a great way to put that. I could see how you <laughs> could you, make that mistake. You know what I mean, motherfucker. motherfucker. ID, Indiana, and then, I. to be honest, ID4, I thought it was, yeah. I thought it was the Jones four. four. I thought it was the fourth one. I forgot that I forgot about Crystal Skull. I thought this was number four. Just thought uh-huh. it was a typo. I you should have told yep. me yes, and I would have just watched that one instead. And been Josh would have been like, I'm at the theater. What the, where are you? Where are you at, motherfucker? What the fuck? <laughs> like, oh, boy. I saw Indy just for you. They should play India. Uh, they should play Independence Day at the theater, because I would have went. Every yeah. year. I would have went, for sure. How is there not one theater in town playing Independence Day? There's gotta Day, be one. Like somewhere. They've gotta be running it somewhere. That would have been cool, actually. I would love to, like on Tuesday, if that's running in, in a theater somewhere yeah. locally, I would love to do that. That would be really cool. Because it's on like fucking TBS all day every year. But yeah, but that, that's a movie that I would love to experience in theaters like again. Like in, in theaters, yeah. It's a perfect theater movie. That's right. Well, rooftop cinema, but that's not really a real cinema. It's <clears throat> one of my favorite, uh, it's one of my favorite theater memories when i was a kid because i almost fucking peed my pants i got a giant like Uh, massive big gulp soda Uh, and i drank the whole thing in like the first 15 minutes of the movie and i didn't want to miss anything so like the last hour of the movie i was like oh god oh shit that's me all the time (laughs) yeah i gotta not drink so much during the movie Damn Uh, all right so we start off it's july 2nd we see the united states flag on the moon Confirming that, yes, we did indeed land on the moon. Get over it, freaks. Maybe. Sorry, Joe Maybe. Rogan. They Maybe. did it. Maybe. What's crazy is, like, uh, at the time, like, this movie came out in 96. It's less than 30 years at that point since they landed on the moon. Oh, oh wow. my God. That stuff yeah. kind of blows my mind yeah, yeah, that's sometimes. Crazy. Uh, but we see, you know, it, the moon, it's starting to get darker. There's shadows. And then we see the alien spaceship flying over the moon and then we see that it's headed directly to earth bam no that's an intense way to start to start the uh, intro to this movie i Solid mean it open it just builds builds from there and then we hear the uh it's the end of the world as we know it uh that's that was uh that's what that, the 90s did that's was that rem rem yep. yeah okay see yep. i know some music that's yeah. what the 90s did just like like the, you said it's a so little, on the nose a little on the nose <laughs> <laughs> everything like, in the 90s was so on the nose super obvious no no subtlety especially i mean especially for this kind of movie that's what this is you know yeah uh yeah so then they uh they got the radio signal and they tell the pentagon uh, Bill Pullman plays President Whitmore. He gets informed of the signal. I have such, like, when you pull off a good scene of, for the very first time, yeah. people are seeing some kind of alien signal come through and it's done well and everybody's freaking out over it. Yeah. I'm such a sucker for those scenes. Those are so It's fun. great because they really built it up. Like, it, yes. even though it is a 90s popcorn movie, like... How it's like what 45 minutes before the aliens attack, right? Yes, it's like a 45 minute build of just that, yes. and like you just keep hearing it and seeing it, and then finally the attack, like, yeah, it's but it's it's a great build towards it, yeah. There's there's a lot of freaking out before you actually start seeing the ship because that's one that's thing good. nowadays movies don't have, um, because the audience is uh, uh, dumb. They, 
Well, they just, you know. Yeah, they have ADD. They can't exactly. be patient to wait for a buildup. I like dumb, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> it works, but so does this. Uh, so we meet Jeff Goldblum, who plays a satellite technician, and he's playing chess with his father. Checkmate. Which becomes a great line later oh, on. Yeah, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harvey Firestein plays his co worker who just yells, David! David! Oh my God, David! <laughs> that might David, be- where are you, David? You're going to have to oh. add that one. <laughs> if, if it doesn't kill you, God. you're going to have to it add took that Harvey to your list. Firestein <laughs> to blow out Andrew's it, voice. That, doing that voice, it hurts so much. David! <laughs> David! Like, you'll lose your voice so oh, quickly. Oh, God, that hurt. I tried to do it. Yeah, that hurt. Because this motherfucker <laughs> lost his voice. And thank God he dies early, so I don't have to quote him that much longer. <laughs> oh, my God, David! Where are you, David? I think the only other movie I have ever seen him in is Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, shit, that's right. Yeah, you're right. You're Come right. here, I'm going to make you a woman. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't even name a bunch of movies. Like, I know he's been in a million of them, but I couldn't. Like, how did this guy even get famous? Uh, the voice. I mean. Uh, Unique I, voices always get that. But he's so annoying in this movie. Really I hate annoying. him so much. For sure. <laughs> it's like the one thing that doesn't hold up in this movie is Harvey Firestein. I mean, the 90s was a good time for annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's true. Uh, then we have Randy Quaid, who plays Drunk Russell. Uh, and then, it's just funny, this is something I've always thought ever since I first saw this as a kid. Shitter was full. Shitter's full. No, but his son looks and sounds just like Keanu Reeves. Absolutely. When I was 10 and I saw this movie, I said, oh, this is Keanu Reeves' younger brother. Same, I was convinced. Same look, same haircut. He even does the like the surfer drawl. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Like when when Randy Quaid flies over, he might as well be like, "Whoa, <laughs> yeah." There's aliens. Totally. Whoa. Totally. It's fucking crazy. And this guy went nowhere. Like I've never seen this kid in anything else. Right? No, yeah. no, I don't recognize him from anything. What else was he in, Josh? Uh, look at Danny Darko. He was gone in sixty seconds. Donnie Darko, yeah, known for Independence Day, known and for Independence Donnie Day. Darko. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's it. Oh, whoa! So, anyways, the whole world's in panic. Planes are flying into the spaceship or the fire, or whatever. And then uh, the military guy, the general, asked the president, uh, "What happens if they do become hostile?" And, pull, and then Whitmore's like, "Then God help us." Yeah. Uh, David sees his ex-wife on TV. She's uh, the president's, uh, what, press secretary? I guess press secretary. I think so, yeah. 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 We, uh, he sees her on TV alerting the press. Uh, then we have a few assholes making fun of Russell in the bar <laughs> cla- for claiming that he was abducted by aliens. Now, hold on a second. This is great. I get it, because he's a drunk. He's a fuck-up, right? He, dr- he flew to the wrong field to deliver, you know? Right. He's a complete fuck-up. His son hates him. He's, he's an embarrassment. He's the town goof. So, of course, they're going to not believe him that he was abducted by aliens. because Just like in real life, if someone said that, you'd be like, yeah, sure, pal. Mm-hmm. But now they know that aliens exist and aliens are here. <laughs> so And they're still making they're fun still, of them. Yeah. They're like, so aliens abducted you? Yeah, sure, fucko. <laughs> it's like, what? They're, look up in the sky. They're here, you assholes. Oh. And then later, like when they interview them on TV, and they're like, the aliens, uh, you know, uh, abused him sexually, and the other friends like, yep, they did. Yeah. Like they're just mm-hmm. smucks. That should have mm-hmm. finally been his opportunity when they were like, oh, did they put something up your butt? He should have been like, yes, look <laughs> at the TV, yes, <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. No, and then they arrest this poor guy. I mean, like, come on, you're arresting people when aliens are showing up on the front. You know, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, so yeah. Then we see uh, Vivica A. Fox's son wake her up. That kid also, like, that little kid uh, did not grow up to be, like, an adult actor or anything like that. I'm sure. He I'm, was in that in Little Rascals. I'm sure I'm oh, fucking yeah. this up, but was was he on Fresh Prince? Was he? I mm. I don't remember him from Fresh Prince or anything I'm, like that. I'm probably fucking this up, but I feel like I recognize he him was, from, from having a role okay, on, on okay, Fresh so Prince. Okay, so he, oh, you're right, he was. He was, yeah, he was Nicky. Who is Nikki? Well, just the little kid on Fresh Prince. Some some little well, I mean, like right his nephew or what? No, that was one of the little or kids. Or his cousin? No, that was just one of the little kids episodes. in the neighborhood. I think well, that's what in, every sitcom does. He in was like in season five. They bring in a young, cute kid. He was in Babe. He was in Little Rascals. I remember him in Little Rascals. If you were my kids, I'd punish you. If we were your kids, we'd punish ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I thought I recognized him from Fresh Prince. 
Yeah, he's done some stuff as an adult, but nothing that anyone's seen. Very few things. Right. Dead Ringer, Gnome Alone. That actually sounds pretty great. What? Gnome Alone. We should review Gnome, <laughs> Gnome Alone. Oh, my God. Oh, That's no. Vern Troyer. Look at the poster. That's Vern Troyer. Holy oh, shit. Jesus. Oh, no. Holy oh, God. wow. Oh, there's a chick in her that underwear. Vern Troyer. Vern Troyer's going to hack her up. Oh, my God. What Ooh. the fuck is going wow. on there? We should review that. Holy shit. Um, but yeah, Vivica, Fo- uh, Vivica Fox is in it. And then we meet Will Smith, who plays Captain Stephen Hiller. But we're just going to call him Will Smith, because that's Will who Smith. he is. Steve. That's fair. No one ever says Stephen Hiller in this film. They say it like once. The rest of the movie, it's just Captain, Captain, you know. But like, uh, you know, then we go, I'm sorry, then we go back to David. He watches the spaceship fly over New York City. Uh, Will Smith finally gets out of bed to get the paper, but then he sees his neighbors panicking. Right, and they, it's kind of like reminiscent of a zombie apocalypse. A little bit, a like little it kind of felt like the beginning of Dawn of the Dead. Mm-hmm. Yes, where she walks outside and sees the neighbors like freaking the, there's out. There's like the big pan scene of every. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was cool. And then uh, David figures out that the signal is a countdown for a coordinated attack from the aliens. He calls his ex-wife, but she doesn't believe him. She's Ugh. like, oh, you're just being dramatic. What? It's like, there's aliens. Ab- there's aliens He's in right the up sky. there above you. What do you think they're here for? It's right. like, hey, I think I know what's going on with all this. Oh, shut up. You're just panicking. And, and you would think yeah. that she knows that he's like super smart. So you know what's funny? maybe he has some type of insight into this. Because the president calls his wife and he's like, get out of L.A. There's aliens. She's like, oh, you dummy. And then <laughs> Jeff Goldblum calls his ex-wife. She's like, oh, you dummy. Vivica A. Fox is the only smart woman in this movie, and she's a stripper. Fucking escort dancer. Yeah. She's the only think about it. She's the only smart woman in the movie. Because then later her stripper friend's like, I'm gonna go meet the aliens. And she's like, You idiot, don't do that. Right. You that know, just shows you street smarts better than book smarts. <laughs> I, I was gonna say that later. Somehow back then, back in like the 80s and 90s, yeah. like strippers were always so like wise and smart and witty. <laughs> yeah. They were always like the most resourceful character. Yeah. They instead just, of uh, like a 19 year old girl on crack. <laughs> That's the realistic. Part. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, uh, Vivica Fox is pissing off Will Smith cause she doesn't want him to go. But I mean, at the time Vivica Fox was a knockout. So you have to put up with that when you're dating a knockout like that. I mean, yeah, that's sometimes. true. That's yeah. very true. Uh, but he tries to calm her down saying, I don't think they traveled 90 billion light years just to start a fight. I don't know. Do you think he really believed that in that moment or was he just trying to calm her down? I don't know. I mean. I think he was just trying to. I mean, he's a freaking fighter pilot. I'm sure. Sure. But in, up until that point, like nothing has had happened. They're just Still. they're just chilling there. He was you know, not, above them. He was not worried too much, but he was definitely just trying to get her to calm be, calm the be fuck quiet down so he could get out the door. That's right. Oh, it was really nice. I mean, invited him to the base too. You know, it was kind of sweet. Uh, was David sweet. almost gets shot by his dad. His dad opens the door and puts a shotgun in his face. Because people are looting. Yep. And then President, uh, oh yeah, we already covered that. Whitmore calls his wife. She doesn't listen. Uh, Russell's kids see their dad on TV being arrested. We got us. They're going to kill us all. Oh, God. And the kids are like, let's roll up. Let's get out. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, let's bail on this fuck. (laughs) You know, at this point, those kids have probably heard millions of stories about their dad being, you know, anally probed or whatever. Or, you know, Mm -hmm. being abducted by aliens. And the kids are just like, let's leave our dad. You know, no problem. Yeah. Right. You know, he's been an asshole our entire life. That's what's also great about the X-Files episode of... uh, um, no, it wasn't an X-Files episode, but there was a, a Halloween episode, Trials of Horror, on The Simpsons where Homer gets abducted, but then the aliens douse him in booze. <laughs> and they're like, so no one will believe you. And of course, no one believes them because he's Homer Simpson. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so then Will Smith has his best friend, Harry Connick Jr., uh, read his rejection letter from NASA. Mm-hmm. You, you know, I can only ever see him. Th- he did this one movie. It was right around the same time uh, called Copycat, uh-huh. where he played a serial killer. I can only ever see him as that guy. Cause really? He, he was so fucked up and creepy in that movie. Hmm. Every time I see him, I'm, I just see him as that. Uh, Harry finds Steve's engagement ring for Jasmine, and we have a little 90s homophobic joke uh, where he's down on one knee. And then the, the other guy walks by and he's like, hey, hey. you guys, hey, that's fine. Don't ask, don't tell. That's right. That's fine. That's <laughs> oh, fine. Boy. 
<laughs> this was like right when that started, right? right exactly. The don't ask, don't tell. That's perfect. <laughs> he says, you're never going to space if you marry a stripper. Yeah. And then we cut to Vivica A. Fox playing Jasmine uh, as the stripper, but as like the most conservative stripper of all time, you know? Yes. Right. She didn't pop one booby at all. Well, no, she, to be no, no titties. To Always be, PG-13. Yeah. Right. Well, to yes. be fair, there's pro- everyone's not paying attention to her anyways. It would be pointless to pop a titty when no one's watching, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, they're all watching the TV screen She's like, anyways. what the fuck? No one's looking at... Why would you go to... Yeah, you go to a strip club? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Bro, did you just look up in the sky? There's a spaceship. All right, meet at the strip club. <laughs> meet at the strip club. We'll form a plan. I got to get one more happy ending before I die. She was like one of the earliest Instagram models. Yeah. Uh, uh, hold on. Yeah, I'm just going to stop at the bank. I'm going to pull out all my money. and We're going to have a fun time at the strip club. Fun time. Yeah, yeah we're all going to tag team. We're all going to fucking run a train on Jasmine. She's, she has no idea what she's in for. <laughs> yeah, she's going to make like five grand, but oh my God, we're going to fuck her up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear that she's getting married to like some fucking f- fighter pilot? Holy shit. <laughs> Times now, fucking fellas. Crazy. Times now. Better be careful. I heard he likes to slap people when he's mad at them. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, That's no. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, David and his father drive to the White House. We find out that David punched the president because he thought that uh, his ex wife was having an affair with him before. He was just running for president. Yeah. Oh, no, he wasn't the president at the time. That's and right. his father keeps saying, like, you punched the president? By uh, the way, there, there was one nice little nod when they were still freaking out when uh, David was still at his job. Yeah. And Harvey Firestein was like, oh, every TV station's making it like it's the 1950s, which is kind of a nod to War of the Worlds. Right. That was pretty fun. And they also played uh, that the other movie. Um, fuck! What the hell is it? that other old movie from the when it was black and white? Body set <clears throat> invasion of the body. No, 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 no. Fuck! It was on the TV. It was like those. Bo- they remade it like fifteen years ago. That movie it was super boring with John Hamm. Ah, oh, fuck! What is it called? I must have I'm missed kill that. myself now. John Hamm. Black Alien and movie. It was a remake, uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. They were playing that on the TV oh, I in one that. of the scenes okay, for like a few that. seconds. Okay. Yeah. But Keanu okay. Reeves was in that too. Yeah, that's right. Little, little Easter eggs every time you see this. Yeah. yeah. So David tells the president, uh, you know, he's like, oh, they're using our own satellites against us and the clock is ticking. And then he shows his laptop and it's like they've got 30 minutes to get out of there. It's like you're relatively calm for the 30 minutes. It's. Right. You know, if they didn't check anything, like I'd like to think that they would have tried to check his math or something like that. They just believe this motherfucker wholeheartedly. Yep. You know? Uh, then they have the welcome wagon helicopters uh, try to communicate with the aliens, but the aliens shoot them down, which you would think they would have waited till it hit zero, but whatever. It's fine. Uh, the countdown hits zero, and then Jeff Goldblum says, checkmate. And the aliens blow up a big building in Los Angeles. They blow up the Empire State Building. And they blow up the White House just as David, his father, his ex-wife, and the president fly away on Air Force One. Yeah. One little little thing we skipped over. I I really like the scene where uh, Bill Pullman's making his speech to the nation, trying to calm everybody down. He's like, if you choose to leave the city, please do so in an orderly fashion. And then it immediately cuts to... "Ah!" chaos that never <laughs> happens but no but to your point i loved the scene where they're driving in the car and everybody you, it's blocked up as going away from yeah. washington dc and it's wide open lanes going towards washington dc <laughs> he's like everyone's trying to leave we're the only schmucks trying to get in <laughs> hey that guy's funny the guy that plays uh jeff goldblum's dad he was very funny in this movie yes uh so yeah they blow up those buildings we cut to Har- uh harvey firestein in this in his car oh crap so he's dead. Thank and this, God. Unfortunately, Thank this God. is the last time you'll hear Andrew doing that voice. Unfortunately. Oh, absolutely. No more, no more quotes. David! All right. <laughs> David. Uh, Jasmine grabs her son and opens a door to escape the fire because that's how fire works. Mm-hmm. This, uh, it was the 90s. You know, while this this movie, you have to throw away some things, you know, they definitely would have died there. Then the dog. <laughs> 100%. The, the dog jumps right in before the fire comes. Mm-hmm. This big action scene for the dog. Right. And then it's July 3rd. Homer. And we see the Statue of Liberty floating in the water. Oh, no. And the Twin Towers are on fire. Yeah. Back when you could... uh, 
back when you could destroy New York in a movie and have it be fun and cool and exciting. That, that was five years before 9-11. Yeah. Oh, shit. Jesus. Wow. That's and depressing. back then they thought if you, if you, you know, set the World Trade Center on fire, it won't collapse. Oh. But we don't know exactly what happened to the World Trade Center in this movie. Well, we just knew it was on fire. Yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> the general tells the president that his wife's helicopter never made it uh, to the rendezvous point. Uh, so he's worried about her. So sad. And then we got uh, Will Smith and Harry Connick Jr. going for a debriefing. And Harry Connick Jr.'s favorite uh, line It's time to kick the tires and light the fires, Big Daddy. Mm hmm. Uh, no, it's, it's really cool. You know, tense scene. They're all trying to get their orders right and everything. Yes. You know, and Harry Connick Jr. makes his coworkers further think that they're gay, a gay couple because then he goes, <laughs> hold me. <laughs> and even they're like commanding officers like, get the fuck off of Harry Connick Jr. <laughs> There's goddamn aliens. And they just, <laughs> the fuck are you laughing about? <laughs> So you want Vince send, McMahon there. You want Vince send, McMahon. Yeah, they sent the fighter pilots to attack the ship, but they got shields. They can't fucking hurt it. And then we have a fuck ton of alien ships fly out to attack, and the fighter pilots are going down one by one. And then Will Smith and Harry Connick Jr. were being tailed, and Harry tried to bank or fly up, but it didn't work, and the mm -hmm. aliens shoot him dead, and Will Smith is pissed. He flies into the Grand Canyon and ejects and causes the other alien ship that was following him to crash. What a crazy fucking scene when it like every, everything that's been happening, these yeah. giant fucking ships show up. They did such a good job of making these massive ships be so oppressively large. It's like, oh, they're <laughs> fucked. And then they blow up these cities. And then after all that, the fighters finally show up. And then all these alien fighters show, yes. like fly out like a swarm. It's like, oh, not this too. Jesus. Not, not only that, they made it so tough just to even take down one. Yeah. And yes. it, you really didn't even take it down. It took itself down. Right. You, like you when know? you do a great zombie movie or show where like one zombie is a major problem. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. Well done. But then uh, Will Smith talking trash while walking to the ship was so fucking great. He's like, that's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, he opens the ship up. We see the alien for the first time. And I don't believe they ever showed the aliens in the trailers. So like when we were going to this film, I think we were all like we none of us knew what the aliens looked like. I'm I think that's probably sure. true. That yeah. probably makes sense. So we f like imagine the first time you saw that alien, you're like, holy shit! Right. Will Will Smith ain't afraid. He just punches him in the fucking <laughs> face. Welcome to Earth. <laughs> oh, and those were some fucking creepy looking aliens too. I mean, Jesus, oh, especially with what happens later. Welcome to Earth is an iconic line. Yes. The most '90s scene you could have. One of the best lines. Welcome to Earth. Punch an alien in the face. <laughs> so Perfect. Great. And then not only that, he pulls out a cigar, lights it, and says, "Now that's what I call a close encounter." Yeah. It's <laughs> a good beautiful. one liner. His best friend just died. Just uh, so the <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he has a lot of adrenaline. His best friend just died, but he defeated the alien. The alien. Alien. Yeah. alien. By the way, why? once they saw what a threat this was, yeah. once they saw that these giant ships were a threat and they were starting to destroy cities in a giant... Bl why the fuck would they open with sending fighter jets at these ships that were the size of a city uh -huh. nuke them immediately yeah like, but then you're jeopardizing everywhere you know everyone else that's there well right but why would you think fighter jets would bring down a city-sized ship aaron you like, start small and you, you work try. Your way big i don't know I you guess. don't start with nukes because once you go to nukes there is no way to, where else to go i i get it but well on man. air force one the general and secretary of defense want to fire nukes and even the president's like, you know, uh, uh, we're going to, what about all the people there? Right. And even, and then David's like, oh my God, we're going to fire nukes. Then everyone's, everyone else in the world's going to fire nukes. We're all going to be dead. We're going to kill them and us. That's true. And then uh, they all dismiss David, but then his father, my favorite part from his father, he's like, hey, hey, don't, don't tell him to shut up. You know, I'll be dead now, right now, if it wasn't for my David. My David, my David, my, my David. David, my David. <laughs> Perfect. My David, David, David. My little boy. My little so, boy, David. So then David's father mentions Area 51. He's like, oh, you guys at the spaceship in the 1950s. Don't tell me you weren't prepared. What are you... Blah, 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 blah. And the, 
<laughs> the president's like, yeah, no, there's no Area 51, man. It, it doesn't exist. And then the Secretary of Defense, ex excuse me, Mr. President, that's not entirely accurate. And then Jeff Goldblum, what? Huh? Wh wh which, which part? What? what? <laughs> now... Now they're gonna they're gonna mention this later too, but like as soon as aliens start showing up, that's when you're like, hey, you know, maybe we should go to Area Fifty One, try to figure this shit out. Yeah, you know that that's when you start bringing out all this knowledge. Well, that's why you know the Secretary of Defense is an idiot. Yeah, exactly. Thank God they had He's David's dad. Yeah, thank you. Without God. David's dad, you'd never know about Area Fifty One. <laughs> that's me. I'm David's dad. You'd all be dead right now if it wasn't for me. What do you mean? Well, I made David, and David saved you. <laughs> That's true. Meanwhile, Jasmine finds the first lady in some rubble. She's all fucked up. Uh, then Will Smith drags the alien across the desert. And what the hell is that smell? <laughs> Kicks him a bunch of times. Uh, Steve meets Russell and tells him that he saw a base close by when he was flying. Uh, the president's group shows up to Area 51, and they meet the super weird director of research. Data from uh, Star Trek, Brent Spiner. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it shows them one of the spaceships that they've had for forty years, and then he takes them to the vault, or as he calls it, the Freak Show. Uh oh. And none of them laugh. He's like, "The Freak Show, get it?" Uh, uh, and they're like, "Yeah, fuck off." No time for laughing. And we see some dead aliens and tanks. That was a cool scene. He says, "You know, they're not so different from us. They just have these." Uh, Suits that they wear on top that make them hard to kill. And then a fleet of RVs show up to Area 51. I thought this was funny because, like, they only needed the one. Right. They only needed Russell. Like, but all the other guys were like, oh, we're going to see some aliens. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy's like, oh, I'm sorry, sir. This is a restricted area. I can't let you pass without clearance. And Will Smith says, oh, you want to see my clearance? And he shows him the alien. They freak out. He's like, or oh, should I just leave this with you? And they're like, all right, let him pass. Let him pass. Will Smith is like kryptonite to military like protocol in this movie. Yeah. Like every time they're trying to enforce some rules, he's just like, fuck off. Right. And they just let him go. Not only that, this is Area 51. You think these guys have seen some pretty weird shit. Yeah. But apparently maybe they never have. No, they're, they're just the guards. They haven't been inside. <laughs> you think you would see people coming in? I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, but they're just guarding people from entering. That's their job. Why would they be told what the fuck is inside? I guess that makes sense. You know, yeah, you, yeah. the the fewer you tell about aliens being around for the past forty years, you can, you know you tell as few people as possible. Which, by the way, this is another like th that one scene where they show up and Will Smith is talking to that guard. It just this is one of those movies where just everybody is in this movie. That even that guy that was the guard, he was in. Uh, uh, Stargate SG-1, I think. Yeah. Like, it, just so many people are in this movie. Right. Mm. Yeah, that's good stuff. So then we have the general, my favorite moment uh, from the general, played by uh, Robert L Logia? Logia? Robert Logia. Logia? Yeah. He was on a few episodes of The Sopranos. He's dead now. But anyways, Aww. my favorite line from him is when he yells at the Secretary of Defense. He's like, you should have told us about this before we launched an attack that cost of the lives of hundreds of American pirates. Like, he's, so <laughs> he's so good at barking at people. <laughs> it's great. He is. He's got that little guttural barking. Yeah. Uh, even The Sopranos, he's like that, too. He's a maniac in like the three episodes he's in. <laughs> it just wrecks havoc. I'm sorry, Godfather. Ugh. Uh, so they decide, they start to dissect the alien, and he wakes up, and it's like, where where did everyone else go? Where did the military go? Did they, were all they like, hey, we're gonna dissect the alien. Well, let's break for lunch. Let's lunch go. time. <laughs> lunch time. Lunch time. Not only that, like not one guy in there to protect them, not, just in case the alien wakes up. Not one single guy in there with a firearm. Not right. one not single one. guy. They could have used some more uh, restraints on the aliens. Maybe some knockout gas. They or should something have had like one that. guy there, and then like the alien infects him, so that he couldn't shoot him dead. You know, right? Sure. Uh, but it makes for one hell of a scene because they come back and the doctor slams on the window. Another iconic line from this movie: "Release me." So good. No. Oh, that was really good. Nice. Jesus. That was pretty good. Uh, he's be, you know, at first they're like, oh, let him in, you know, let him in. And they're like, no, 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 no. And they realize that he's being controlled by the alien. Mm -hmm. Through to, uh, telepathy, uh, the president asks, can there be peace? Peace. No peace. 
What is it that you want us to do? Die! I mean, perfect die. 90s villain. Yeah, it was fucking great. I just want you to die. Thank God this random alien, you know, knows all the master plans of all the aliens. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's Well, telepathy, I guess they told all, Maybe. all of them. Well, he knows what he's fucking doing. He knows what his job is. Those are always the best alien villains when they show up and they're just like, no, you're like ants to me. You you mean nothing. Yeah. I, just, I should just step on you. Right. It's not even a morality thing. And boy, step they did. It's funny because uh, there was this film, me and my friends would watch uh, really bad B movies. And there was this one film called Alien 3000. Uh, about an alien in a cave. It's really stupid. But there's one part where, like, uh, an alien, like, they rip off this scene, like, on purpose. And we were just, like, waiting for it. Wait, like, they're talking. Wait, and, then, and then finally, the doctor's like, you must release me. And we're like, yeah! <laughs> it's funny. It was, it's one, it was, it's really funny to, to watch and laugh at. But, yeah. So then the alien gets in the president's head and they go, oh, is that glass bulletproof? No, sir. And they shoot no, the sir. alien dead. Really cool uh, scene there. And the president says he showed me everything. They move from planet to planet and consume every natural resource. Nuke them. Nuke the bastards. Such a great scene. Like everything that had happened up to that point, And finally the president's like, fuck it. Just fucking nuke them. Right. Because right. he'd been so hesitant until then. Like, nah, I don't know, guys. Just fucking take him out. It's pretty unique, too, because usually the aliens show up because they want their planet. They want to live there. These aliens just want to like take some corn and bring it back to their planet. Yeah, right? they just want to consume. Yeah, because they were like <laughs> locusts. They said like yeah. they just consume and move on. Yeah, unless yeah. unless they don't have a home planet. That's kind of how it sounds. Is they don't really have a home planet. They just this show just up them. and just eat some funyuns and move on. I guess not. But the sequel kind of fucked that up a little bit. But mm. we're not going to talk about the sequel. Because the sequel's terrible. I no. still haven't seen that. You never saw it? I know because no, you it told either. me it was yeah, terrible. No, so I stayed terrible. away. It's Same here. so bad. The fact that they even did it without Will Smith was so stupid. Yikes. Uh, so, anyways, David has a conversation with his ex wife, and she, you know, about he's bitching that, like, so she divorced him because she wanted to work in the White House? You I, couldn't be married and also have a job? I think she divorced him <laughs> because David wasn't ambitious. Maybe David didn't want to move to Washington, D.C.? It was kind know. of confusing. It was like half that he had no ambition and half yeah. he didn't want her to go do this. She said, uh, haven't you ever wanted to be part of something special? And he says, I was part of something special. Oh, Oof. right in the gut. <laughs> right in the gut. Uh, so anyways, they fire a nuke at the spaceship in Houston, Texas. Oh, my God. So we all have memories of this. Yes. Oh, yeah. Kids booing in my theater. Uh, what was yours? In in my theater, everyone just went, "Oh no!" <laughs> in mine, everybody Houston. was cheering. That's funny. Once it was like Cheer. Houston, everyone was like, "Yay!" <laughs> and we all saw this in Houston. Yes. yes. We were all in Houston. We, we saw did. this movie in three different theater reactions. Did y'all see right. it in Rosenberg or Houston? No, I mean me it was Sugarland. I mean oh. Sugarland. Sugarland. Well, yeah. y'all guys were well, probably that cheering. Before, that was before. Uh, AMC, right? It had to, yeah. Oh, wait, but... Th yeah, so then what other theater... I used to go to West Oaks, but I don't know if I saw this at well, West this, Oaks. This is long enough ago. Th th this was back when I went to theaters that had like six screens and shit. Yeah. Like little... But I mean, what... Do you know? Little, do you remember what theater you went to? Uh, I mean, I, it's probably a little six screen theater that doesn't exist anymore, I think. Oh, man. I guess I saw it at... I think so. I, thought, I guess I saw it at West Oaks. I th That's the, where always where we would go before the AMC. The memory I have of it is this little six screen theater that I don't right. think even exists anymore. Right. So y'all's theater were cheering mainly because y'all guys were out of the blast radius. When my theater <laughs> was in the blast radius... Well, my theater wasn't cheering. They, they Everyone was like, oh, God, like it was like a groan. Like, uh, oh, okay. oh, no. Uh, my, mine was cheering because they were just all like, yeah, let's get blown up. Right. <laughs> they mentioned Houston. Woo! Oh, but it's a nuke. Yeah. So the hills... The hills have eyed uh, all of Houston, Texas. Yep. yep. That, is that why everyone's so stupid here? Yeah, well, <laughs> well. Uh, so they start celebrating, but you know the target remains. Didn't do shit. <sighs> Meanwhile, Will Smith hijacks a helicopter uh, to go find Jasmine, and he finds the first lady. And here's where I'm like, no one else was looking for the first lady, right. really? 
Right. They, like, really? Not one team that went was out. Odd. Not one search team. After the plane went down, you think they would know where the plane went down, Last right? known coordinates. You yeah. Know, that's Anybody? a pretty important plane. Right. And then uh, when Will, another time where Will Smith hijacks the plane, that guy points his gun at him. Again. And he's like, do you really want me? Do you really want to shoot me? Just tell him I hit you. Which, you know, if we knew what we knew now, we would have had right. Chris Rock play mm -hmm. uh, that guy. For perfect. sure. And well, we're just perfect. like, no, you're not. And then slap. And right. then he flies away. Then and then really earlier when, when he goes to Air Force One, it would have been, <laughs> you can't pass it without clearance. Well, Boom, whoop, slap! And then Chris, like, okay, Chris, you're clear. <laughs> and then even later, when the when the the alien pops out, the alien would have been played by Chris Rock. Like, hey, you not man? Welcome to Earth, Chris Rock. <laughs> Chris Rock plays four different roles in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they bring Jasmine Brat uh, back. They bring the first lady, but a doctor tells the president that uh, the first lady has too much internal bleeding. There's nothing that they could do for her. And Whitmore tells his wife, the doctors think that you're going to be just fine. But she smiles and says, liar, which that's their thing. He's a bad liar. Uh, they established yeah. that in the beginning of the movie, that that's their thing together, where, you know, that's how they play with each other. But in this in this sense, <laughs> it was sad, very heartbreaking, heartbreaking scene where his daughter's like, is mommy sleeping? He's like, yeah. Mommy's sleeping. Way, it's like, too, God. Way, way too heavy of a scene for this kind of movie. But oh. see, when we were kids, that was nothing to us. Oh, no. It was just like, oh, that's kind of but sad. But now I guess. two of us have kids. Yeah, we both have kids. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. It's like, oh, God, no. Holy shit. Oh, please, God, no. It, it just makes you hate the aliens even more. Like, ah, oh, they think, just killed the president's wife. I, I think wife. what it does for this movie is like, even though he's the president, he still went through... He still went through it like loss. everyone else. Yeah. That's, he yeah. suffered loss in this. That's right. true. You yes. can't kill the little girl, but you can kill his mom. Yeah, which even gives him more motivation later to fuck, you know, to fucking kill them. Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. So then it's July 4th. Uh, David is a drunken mess and he's just trying to wreck the place so the aliens won't want their shit anymore. But he really is just throwing some garbage cans around mm -hmm. and he falls down and his father's like, get off, get up off the floor before you catch gold. Because uh, his father is still old school, they, you know, like my mom, they think you can catch a cold by sitting on the cold floor. Yep. You know what? Thinking back <laughs> of it, David's dad, the MVP of this movie. <laughs> In a way, he, he, he got them to Area Fifty One. He helped David realize that you could give aliens a cold. You know, <laughs> MVP. Without David's dad, aliens would have taken over. What, what did you say? I'm like, I catch gold. Oh my God, you're a genius. <laughs> this is back in the glory days of movies when there would be a scene where it's like, oh man, I wish I had some pineapples for lunch. Wait, what'd you say? Pineapples? <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> exactly. So David gathers everyone around. He tells the major to shoot the Coke can off the ship. Uh, but the shield causes it to ricochet. I mean, someone could have died there. Luckily, no one died. <laughs> yeah. There had to have been a better way to do that. Maybe throw a rock at the cocaine yeah. or that something. That would have gone very differently if somebody yeah. caught that in the head. But it wouldn't have made his point as uh, awesome. I guess. So David then infects it with a virus, and this time the Major shoots the Coke can. Mm. I mean, the real flaw of the aliens was they didn't have uh, the... Uh, uh, fucking Norton virus. They didn't have Norton antivirus. <laughs> Three Three Gotta get that McAfee, guys. Oh no, we've been infected with a Windows 95. Uh, you can't infected. fucking show up here without <laughs> McAfee. Come on, what are you doing? <laughs> we've been hacked. <laughs> uh, so this time the major shoots the cocaine. Yeah, the Secretary of Defense. He's been a total asshole this whole movie. He's like, no, this isn't gonna work. No, no. And this guy's always an asshole in every movie. Yeah. Uh, but then finally. Uh, you know, the president fires his ass. It's great. Yeah, it's a good moment. That'd be a fun career to be one of those character actors that's yeah. just always a fuck in every movie. Right. It's like, just be so much of a fuck that you keep getting roles. He's another one. As that, a fuck. Right. Because that means you're really good at yeah. it. He's another one. He's also dead. He died a few years ago, that guy. Oh, oh did he? R.I.P. Oh. No, maybe I'm wrong. R.I.P. Annoying character. No, maybe actor. not. Hold on. Let me find out. Well, we're getting mm. old enough that a lot of these guys are dying from our favorite childhood movies jeff goldblum what so don't you oh fucking, sorry i'm sorry yes. don't you Jesus. fucking tease me you asshole yeah he died in 2014 oh uh, man yeah but he's he's always an asshole in every movie but he did he did it really well yeah 
you're fired. He's like, you can't do that. It's like, well, he's the president, you dummy. He just did. He did that pretty close to Trump style. And then, like, when you think about the best part of this movie, like, Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum teaming up. And they really only have, like, a few minutes of screen time together. Mm -hmm. But, like, their first thing was uh, Jeff Goldblum saying, you really think you could fly that thing? You really think you could do all that bullshit you just said? Don't, like, don't laugh too hard at me, but I... The two of them in this movie, with both of them at their peaks, this was like to me as good as uh, Travolta and Cage in Face Off. Like sure. just two guys sure. when they were at their white hot peak in the same movie. I know. I wish we just had more of them together in yeah. this one. They, yes, and they had a lot of chemistry. They should have done some other movies together. Maybe fighting, you know, dinosaurs or they something. They played like that. off each other really well in this. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite uh, ridiculous scenes in this movie is when the other countries are getting like, um, <laughs> what are they doing? The fucking uh, oh, um, uh, beep, Morse beep, code. Beep, beep. Yeah, the Morse code. And the English are like, the Americans have a plan. And the other guy's like, it's about time. <laughs> it's about bloody time. The Americans saved us. We're just waiting on these guys. <laughs> Like they just they're just like twiddling their thumbs like doop a doop a doop a doop. Ooh, the Americans have a plan. Oh thank God. <laughs> they can stop trying to figure this shit out. I fucking love that. That's hilarious. So then the Air Force is accept, uh, accepting any help. They're like any volunteers and Russell's like, I can fly. I'm a pilot. And they're like, Yeah, sure. Right, go ahead. Go right ahead. Uh, we'll talk about the alternate scene and alternate ending later. Oh. But just remember that part. Mm. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, Steve marries Jasmine, Aww. and uh, David and his ex-wife are there as witnesses, and they kind of look at each other. They have a little moments. They were late. I think they had just uh, you know finished uh, getting back together. Uh, well, pretty much. Yeah. Then we have uh, the greatest speech in movie history. Oh boy! Here we go. In less than an hour, aircraft from here will join others from around the world. And you will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Mankind, that word should have new meaning for all of us today. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interests. Perhaps it's fate that today is the 4th of July and you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live, to exist. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, Today we, we celebrate our Independence Day. Day. Yes. Oh. Fuck yes. Yes. Goddamn right. I'm ready to pick up an M4 and just start shooting it at aircraft. Do you know what an M4 <laughs> is, Josh? M14. M14. I don't know if that's correct. No. I'm ready to pick up a wow. large rifle and just start going to town. Uh, then I'd be very worried. I would be very scared There's no if Josh aliens had here. any access no, to that. Oh, you know what but, I mean. Come on. That's, but that's a fiery shit. Speech. Yes. This gets you so fired up every fire, time. Fire, fire would fire. I would follow this man straight to the depths of hell. Like, we've all seen this movie, what, 50 times? 100 yes. times? And it's more? amazing every single time. And every time you hear the speech, it's just... Right, just get you Just gets up. your balls <laughs> tingling. It's just... So Fuck tell yes. me what you did here, Josh, because you just sent me something. Oh, no. And I'm already reading some of it, and it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> that what? is that is ChatGBT rewritten uh, President Whitmore's speech with Trump's mannerisms. <laughs> oh, no. So there's no audio? Oh, there's no. There's no audio. I thought you could, like, plug stuff in, and then it would be Trump's voice. No, well, you might be able to. I can't do that. Well, that's the only way this it's any so good. This is so fucking No, because Andrew can do the Trump voice. So yeah, I but I'm not, I'm not great at it, but <laughs> this is so great. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Let me tell you, in less than an hour, we're going to see some tremendous aircraft from right here. 
joining others from all around the world. And let me tell you, folks, uh, we're going to witness the greatest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Believe me, it's going to be huge. <laughs> you can see him saying that. Oh, my God. Now, ma now, mankind, that word is a powerful word, a tremendous word. We can't let our petty differences divide us any longer. It's time to come together, folks. We're going to unite for our common interests. You know, it's, it's quite something that today, right on the 4th of July, we find ourselves once again fighting for our freedom, not just from old tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live, to exist, and let me tell you, if we win the day, the 4th of July won't just be an American holiday anymore. Nope, it's going to be the day when the world, let me say it loud and clear, the world <laughs> declared in one voice, we, will, we won't go quietly into the night, we won't disappear without a fight, we're going to live on, we're going to survive. Today, folks, we celebrate <laughs> our Independence Day. Folks. <laughs> and let me tell you, it's going to be the greatest celebration you've ever seen. Believe me. It's going to be huge. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. Thank you, ChatGPT. Oh. What would the Joe Biden one be like? Yeah, we're going to do it, man. <laughs> We're going to get the aliens, man. Uh, no, no, it's just going to be... Uh, I, have, I, have I have that, too. Blah, 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 groundhogs. No, it's... Uh, we're going to... Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. Repeat the line. Today, we celebrate <laughs> our Independence Day. Here, here's just the first uh, little paragraph. I want to take a moment to talk about the tremendous challenge we face today. In just a short while, planes from all over the world will be joining us in an incredible, unprecedented aerial battle. It's going to be big, folks. The biggest ever in history. <laughs> and we're not just talking about the United States here. We're talking about countries coming together all over. Do the last part that we celebrate. What does he say for the we celebrate Independence Day? Because uh, Trump added a lot. <laughs> so today, my friends, let us come together. Let us celebrate this <laughs> Independence Day like never before. Let us show the world the strength and resilience of the American people. Mm. And let us remember the fact of the immerse. Uh, immerse? Well, he probably would say that. Immerse challenges we have the power to overcome. Immense. 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 There we go. Immense. Oh, he would have said that. We have the determination, the courage, and the spirit to prevail. Happy Independence Day, folks. God bless you all, and may God save the queen. <laughs> no, did what? you really? Did it really put that in there? <laughs> no, I did not. Because I was going to say that. <laughs> I swear to God, I was waiting for you to stop. So I, like because he said that recently. <laughs> it's like you fucking idiot. <laughs> My God, <laughs> that's great. Uh, I also, I'll save this one for later. We will not go quietly into the night. <laughs> we will not vanish without a fight. Uh, yeah, what a speech. Uh, the general then asked the president, like, "Oh, what are you doing?" and the president says, I'm a combat pilot. I belong in the air. And he gets in one of the fighter pilots. How about that for a president? Right. How about Leads. that for... Leads. That and how about that for a president whose daughter just lost her mom. Yeah. And now you might be done up there. And now what happens to your daughter? That's balls. Well, it's balls sure. That's but, balls. you know... He's a great combat pilot. You got to save the world. He was the George W. George H. No, George W. George, George w. w. Bush of his generation. Yeah, sure, Josh. Yeah, this Bush. guy's just yeah. Sure. George Bush was a come on. He was a he was a he was a pilot too. Uh, Will Smith struggles with the spaceship at first, and he's like, "Oh, oops, let's try that again." And <laughs> Goldblum's like, "Yes, yes, yes," but but without the oops. <laughs> That's right. And then uh, they get sucked into the mothership, and they see millions of aliens. We just see like a. A few, but Jeff Goldblum makes a point. He's like, there's there's like millions of them. My God. <clears throat> what are they then, planning for? An yeah, invasion. An invasion. So David starts uploading the virus. Uh, they fire a Which missile. Which is very easy to do, by the way. Very easy. Very Again, easy. well, they've got no Norton. They've got no McAfee protection. 1995 laptop, just fine. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, they fire the missiles at the ship, but the shield is still up. Uh, they're about to retreat, but the president wants one more shot at it. And he fires a missile, and it's a direct hit. And they fire some more missiles, but it's not doing enough damage. Right. Let's let's just pause there for just a second. Yeah. That moment after this whole movie, it's so satisfying. That first yeah. missile impact. And right. that's, that's what I was talking about earlier. We were watching this movie with Andrew's son, mm -hmm. and we watched this whole thing, and finally that first missile finally hits the ship, and Andrew's son is like, yeah! Right, yeah. It was right. great because I, I felt the same thing when I was a kid watching yeah. this. Because not only that, because the first missile hit 
and it did nothing. You're like, oh, they just did all that work. Well, the for shield nothing. wasn't down. The shield wasn't down yet. Damn. Right. <clears throat> the, you know. So satisfying. Uh, so the alien ship opens their giant beam thingy to kill everyone. And the only fighter pilot who has a missile left is Russell. And Russell tries to fire the missile, but it's jammed. Uh, the alien ship is about to fire. And Russell looks at the picture of his kids and he says, tell my kids I love them. You serious, Clark? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. I and like then he it. says, all right, you alien assholes. In the words of my generation, up yours. And then he starts flying right up the ship and... That's where, like, the blue light shines on him. It's a close-up of him. He goes, hello, boys. I'm back. Such a satisfying scene. So fucking awesome. Amazing. After getting probed, he was the one that finally did it. He probed them back. Wow, he probed so them back. So satisfying on so many levels. He right. went up That's the great. ships. He went up the ships, asshole. Anus. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And th- luckily, this movie takes a page from Star Wars where everything in this alien armada, they all have the little Death Star yeah. trench weak spot. Yes. Everything has a weak spot in this movie. President Whitmore, he did it. The son of a bitch did it. Great moment. Uh, but we still got Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum trapped in the mothership. So they share a cigar together. They want us to think that they're you know going to die here. They're like, right. well, we might as well have these cigars. But then we see that they were all playing, you know, they were they were playing with us. They wave at the alien who's controlling their ship. David sends the alien watching them like a skull and a virus or something. And then Will, fi- uh, Will Smith fires a nuke that's going to explode in 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And they're trying to get out. And Will Smith's like, I ain't heard no fat lady. Forget the fat lady. You're obsessed with the fat lady. Drive us out of here. And <laughs> they fucking fly out. The ship's about to close. And. Goldblum says the line from Jurassic Park, must go faster, must, must go, go faster. faster. Two movies in oh, a row. Oh, shit. That's okay. Nice. Okay. Very I like that. great fan service. I didn't even think about that. Great fan service. Uh, they fly out and the mothership explodes and everyone thinks Will Smith and Goldblum died. But then we see them walking in the desert together and they're greeted by their women. And the best part was, so Will Smith's doing his little strut walking away from the ship, but so is Goldblum. So they're both like doing yeah. the same strut, like they're a fucking tag team. It's mm-hmm. a great, it's a great shot. Great scene. Well, right before that, you know, it kind of tricks you into thinking that they're gonna die because they get caught up in all the all that blown up material from the from the uh, alien ship. Yeah. Right? You know, and they're riding the wave onto Earth, and you know, you're, a little moment where you think maybe they had died because they had lost contact. But yeah, powerful. It's the nineties. It's the nineties. Mm-hmm. They didn't die. In no these one movies. died in the nineties. Nope. <laughs> in these movies. No least. heroes in these movies. No. Nope. Well, I mean, I guess uh, Randy Quaid did. Well, but, yeah. maybe he might have just gotten well, probed again. I don't. I don't no, think. His, I don't think his name was on the poster of this movie. No, I don't think so. <laughs> but still, he was the big, uh, the big hero, for yep. sure. Yep. And they watch fireworks and the movie. You know, it's the alien ship exploding, but it's fireworks. <laughs> they watch aliens death. Still fireworks. <laughs> Which this this kind of sets up an interesting like the way this movie was going. So like Houston's nuked. There's multiple cities in America that are just devastated. New York's yeah. gone. <laughs> but if you're in like say you're in Milwaukee or something, Milwaukee might be totally fine. Right. Like they're all just gonna fucking go to work tomorrow. Well, it's like, uh, I mean, think when you think about it, it's like 9-11. Right. You know, when the sure. buildings collapse, like, it was like nothing happened here. Mm-hmm. That's but right. But there, it's like hell on earth. That's right. So there's a bunch of people that just, like, were able to fucking go to work the next day. It's like, yeah, there was an alien invasion yesterday, but got to go bunch, punch but the clock But I got to go back morning. to McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, work my spreadsheets. So, yeah, what a movie. What a uh, run for Roland Emmerich too! Like his movies before this, Universal Soldier, great. This great, was the last. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Like Ro- Universal Soldier, Stargate, and then this. Then he lays a turret. His next. But this movie, was his last he, good movie, right? He made. Uh, well, one his next movie after this is the shocking one because he made this, which is one of the best yeah. movies ever. And Andrew, what was his next movie after this? Gojira. Gojira, and then right after that, he made The Patriot. 
with, uh, okay. yeah, with Mel true. Gibson, which was fun. Well, that's was not a blockbuster. You know, that's not a big uh, a, yeah. world is over movie. But The Day After Tomorrow it wasn't is. a disaster movie, but Day yeah. After Tomorrow was. I never saw Day After Tomorrow. Really? It was. It that's was a twenty. Good one. I did not like twenty twelve. Uh, twenty twelve was not was great. Day, no. Day After Tomorrow wasn't great. It was. He. That's when he got in his disaster movie phase. Yeah. He just got obsessed with disaster movies. Oh, right. Shit. But. Uh, so I think you guys know the alternate ending, right? You know it. No. Uh, you're probably going to remind me. I don't know if the top of I feel of like I've head. told both of you this before. Probably, but Okay, so me. when Randy Quaid, this was the original ending. This was the original ending. Uh, Randy Quaid said, I can fly. I'm a pilot. And the major guy was like, no, you're drunk. You can't. So they, they reject him. Hmm. Like he doesn't get to be a fighter pilot. Then at the end... When they're like, no one has a missile left. It's over. They're about to kill us all. Then we got, hey, Mr. President. And Randy Quaid is flying his shitty fucking. Uh, oh, my God. His, his the shitty plane. Biplane. The his red, shitty, like, prop his, plane. He's flying his, his red biplane. Like the goddamn this Red Baron. This is on the internet. You could watch this. <laughs> right. Uh, maybe I should have just played it. Maybe but, should've. He, but and then he also duct taped a missile. No. To, what? Yes. He duct taped a missile oh, to Lord. his plane and then he flew up into the fucking spaceship and did the same thing, but just Sick. it was so not cool. Okay. <laughs> they definitely did it Say, way I'm better. A, I'm in a shit ass prop plane and I taped a missile. Yes. Wow. Right. Duck. That's great. That's a hell of a lot of duct tape, too. Yeah, it's so they... dumb because they show him and he's like, I got a missile right here. And he's like slapping the missile. I'm glad, like, what? glad they didn't do that. That sounds Jesus. like goddamn Looney Tunes. It's Holy shit. Terrible. Uh, like this wow. movie would could have had like well you know it's a pretty fun movie but what the fuck was that ending <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> Jesus <laughs> uh, holding holding a missile under his arm while he's riding in the airplane yeah uh, I saw a neat little bit of tr a little bit of trivia about the movie so where President Whitmore was doing his speech that was in front of the hangar that once housed. Anolia Gray, which was one Enola of the bombers. Oh my god. Anola Gray. Oh my god. Anola Gay. Josh. One of the bombers that dropped oh my one god. of the bombers that dropped the atomic bomb on Japan in uh, yeah. August. We're Josh, about to see that movie. Josh, you better hope that we cool. don't have any military fans Why? because they're gonna tear Enola you. Anola Gray. Anola Gray. No, he, no, he didn't even say that. It was like Emola Gray. I said <laughs> Enola said Gay. The first time. Enola Gray. Whatever. No. Jesus Christ. Still not. Yeah, killed. Josh. We're about to see that movie in three weeks. It's called Oppenheimer. But they don't up, say. Buddy. Yeah, they don't say in fifty years. Fifty years in the future, President Whitmore would stand. Uh, you know, blah, blah blah blah. Fuck y'all. Yeah. Fuck us, Josh. We're the idiots. So before we forget, real sure. quick, Josh. Mm -hmm. One out of ten. What's your score for this? Eight. That's a ten for me. I mean, it, eight. like as a. Summer oh, action, it, it, it's a 10. No, this movie had some problems. It was what did they get wrong that this is an eight? What did they get wrong, Josh? I mean, uh, what uh, uh, Vivica Fox, she should have died. Why, uh, why she went into that little hole with a are you fucking stupid? I'm you, just saying. really, are you nitpicking like that? That is so dumb. I'm just saying, this is a blockbuster Smith, movie. Will Smith randomly finds Vivica A. Fox for reasons. I mean, well, they, they kill her in the sequel. I mean, they already had some notable deaths. <laughs> In the Listen, movie. it's a good movie. It's an eight, eight and a half. But Vivica Fox should have. So if Vivica Fox died, it's a ten. Ten. Ten out of ten. So no, dumb. there's other reasons. We should reasons. just stop asking him to there's rate. There's other reasons. Okay. This so, Aaron, the, what's your for, rating? This isn't the perfect movie in the history of movies, okay? Jesus. No, but for a blockbuster, like, end of the world movie. Yeah, it's super true. This is a good, good movie. For a blockbuster summer action movie, it's, it's a ten. You can't improve this. No, Aaron, you could have. You just kill Vivica Fox. Just then kill it's a perfect Vivica movie. Fox. Then it works. Then it then it works. Then it makes sense. Oh boy. And the dog should have blown up too when yes. the fire yeah. came. Fuck the dog. Uh some more trivia when Will Smith yelled, What the hell is that smell? That was unscripted. Uh this they filmed it in Salt Lake, uh the uh the Great Salt Lake. Mm. Uh is home to Brian Shrimp. When they die. The bodies sink to the bottom of the lake, which isn't oh. very deep and decompose. When the wind kicks up just right, the bottom mud is disturbed by the smell of millions of decaying brine shrimp can be very, very bad. Apparently, nobody warned Will. Oh, That's shit. disgusting. 
Jesus. <laughs> he really did kick whatever was in there, too. Woof. <laughs> Fuck that the smell. <laughs> is so fucking gross. Yeah. Uh, director Roland Emmerich was notified one day that Robert... Uh, Loja. Loja was very upset and refusing to leave his trailer. Several, several days later... Uh, producer Dean Devlin accidentally suggested to Loja that he watch Airplane for inspiration huh? when he actually intended to suggest Airport. Oh, that's amazing. Not familiar <laughs> with either film, Loja rented Airplane, <laughs> and after watching it, uh, he thought he had unknowingly been participating in the production of a spoof, spoof movie. movie. That's what? Amazing. What was he angry about? <laughs> What's my motivation? I don't know. To blow up the aliens? R for Robert Loja. What oh, for oh my God. It's Robert Loja. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Oh my God. That's, That's... great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I'll do the movie now. I watched Airplane. <laughs> he took Airplane as inspiration. That That's probably funny. made it even better. Yeah. That's funny. They used a lot of uh, like miniatures to make the explosions happen. Like blowing up the White House and stuff like that. Hmm. It was cool. Uh, when Dean Devlin first pitched the script to 20th Century Fox, this is this is very interesting. It was described as World of Worlds, uh, World of Worlds meets Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. Which I'm watching this movie. What? Hold on. I'm, when I, when we were watching this, I never thought of it until earlier today. We're watching this movie. It's all these different characters, and at the end of the movie, they all come together and meet each other. Oh shit! That's true. That's that's a good point. Yeah. Wow. I was like, this is kind of this is kind of pulp fictiony in that sense. Because that's one of the best payoffs in the movie for me is when you finally get to see yeah. Jeff Goldblum and Will Smith do their thing together. Hmm. That that was a big payoff. Because that's pretty rare in movies where it's like there's like four like what three main characters, a bunch of separate groups, and they're yeah. they don't know each other. Like you know, not really. They're not. Yeah. That's an interesting point. I like yeah. that. Hmm. Pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff on IMDb, but uh, yeah. All right, let's do fan questions. Yes. Pull this up real quick. Uh, let's see here. Andy Piconi, if this were to actually happen, how on earth would you clean up one of those spaceships? Well, here's the other thing. When those spaceships crash on Earth, like the one they blew up did... I mean, that would kill a fuck ton of people, too. Like, that's almost like a comet hitting Earth. Right. I, I was joking right. during the movie. Like, okay, so now that they have the shields down, they go to Chicago yeah. and shoot down the one over Chicago. And now Chicago's gone because yeah. the Chicago-sized <laughs> ship lands on Chicago. Yeah. What was... Uh, it's kind of funny how the movie ends and it's just... You're just... The expectation is that they're going to win. Right, but that was one. That was two ships, right? There's still what? Oh, two right, more? all over the world. Yeah, there was like thirty six of them, or <laughs> I know, twenty four, or and something the general, like that. The general's like, "Tell the world how to beat them." It's like <laughs> we can just knock down all of these massive ships, yeah. like it's nothing. Hey, Jeff Goldblum, we're gonna need you to do this a few more times. Well, I guess I'd like to think with the mothership dead that, you know, it just got a lot easier for all the that's, other Yeah, mothers. that's that's what I was wondering, because at first yeah. it was like, okay, we can take down the shields for a yeah, few minutes. Yeah, that's right. Now it's but, done. But once the mothership blew, then that then they had no more shields at all at that point, right? That's right. true, yeah. So they could yeah. take their time. Uh, to achieve the look of Houston as seen from the air at night, the crew simply poked holes in a sheet of black construction paper uh, placed the paper in front of a bright light in a smoke-filled room and photographed it using special lighting to accomplish oh. the effect. Interesting. Interesting. Huh. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Rizzler, Randy Quaid, killed it in this movie. His yep. character was such a beauty. Uh, it's funny now because now he actually believes that aliens are here oh, and everything. He's poor, like He's gone Poor Randy super Quaid. Super nut. He lost his mind. Uh, he really did get probed. He says... <laughs> yeah. Two great Quaid roles. Uh, can't decide which was better, Cousin Eddie in Christmas Vacation or Russell in Independence Day. Come, that's it's, that's really tough. It's it's tough, but I mean, it's Cousin Eddie, right? <sighs> Shitter's full. In I mean, Christmas Vacation. I mean, he's in, funnier in that movie. Right. So In Christmas Vacation. But he saved the world in this one. He did. That's true. <laughs> he, saved, he saved Las Vegas. Or no, where, wherever the, wherever that is. Uh, Chief Area Nakahomer, uh, the scene with the alien running around still scares me today, and Harvey Firestein was a weird part of my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. 
David. David. Push fire, Barry. Aliens, ghosts, monsters like Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster. I think you push Mon- Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot, right? No. No? Push aliens. Aliens are far... They could do way more than Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster. Fire ghosts. Push aliens. Fire fuck ghosts. I would agree. Push yeah. aliens, yeah. Harpoon finger fuck. Have you guys seen the trailer for the movie Dumb Money? Stories about Game Stonk. And as a huge cast looks interesting, yes, I should have brought that up. Andrew was just telling me about this last night. No, I have not. So Steve Cohen, who owns the Mets, is in this movie being played by Vincent D'Onofrio, Kingpin himself. Really? Play Steve Cohen. Because Steve Cohen was one of the guys that fucked everyone out of their money. Right. So he like, shut that shit down. That's why I kind of have a love-hate thing with the Mets, because I hate him, because he co- he cost me some money as well. <laughs> right. Um, but to be fair, he's still spending made, on players. I still made some money. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, my whole thing is win a World Series and I'll forgive you. But the Mets are fucking terrible. So fuck you, Steve Cohen. He says, also, I'd like to throw idiocracy into the classic movie review pile. Watched it again recently and it still holds up. Ow, my balls. I do like idiocracy. It's great I've never movie. seen it. Yeah, yeah it's good. Uh, PCJ, this movie was the first summer blockbuster when I started working as an usher at AMC in 96. Oh, shit. This movie has it all. It made uh, Cousin Eddie a national hero. Uh, Goldblum crushed his second best performance behind Jurassic Park. Agree. Houston was nuked. And we had the greatest presidential speech in the history of America. America. Uh, This is impossible, but he has a push fire Barry. Uh, President Whitmore's Independence Day speech. Uh, Joker's wind the clock back a year from Dark Knight speech. And then Aldo Reigns, uh, 100 Nazi scalps, and I want my scalps from Inglorious Bastards. Yikes. I'm not even going to pick. Uh, this is just mean. You that, push that's, Whitmore. That's you, kind of a mean you question. You bury the. I can't. I bury can't, Joker. I can't. I can't choose that. And you, fi- you fire the Nazis. And. and Andrew can't choose. It's a mean question. You yeah, always I, fire the Nazis. You you have to go with the Bill Pullman speech, but with frustration because the other two are so good. Yeah. Bobby the Mark Soydam. Uh, no spoilers here, but I didn't care for Indy 5. Take that as you please. Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil it either. I mean, it it was better than 4, but... Tim say, don't see Indy 5. It was kind of boring. Rank them, Aaron. Yeah. Rank the indie movies? Mm-hmm. Well, obviously, four and five are at, at the bottom. Everybody has their own opinions. I think everybody agrees that the second one, Temple of Doom, was the third best out of the first three. Hmm. Uh-huh. I have more member berries about that one. But, I mean, it, Raiders is one. I think I think Last Crusade is two, and then Temple is three. But Temple is... Okay. Even though Temple is three, I would almost put that like as... 1B with Last Crusade. I really, really like that movie. And then it's 5 and then 4? And then 5 and then 4. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Omar, what's up, motherfuckers? Never seen this movie. Maybe your review will uh, convince me to check it out. Let's review the real best American movie ever next week, The Rock. Oh, fuck yes. Go fuck yourselves, tits, two titty fucks. You don't have to talk me into that. That is, yeah, that's a ton of titty fucks. (laughs) <laughs> okay well yeah thanks josh no problem all right that's all for fan questions so make sure you subscribe to our podcast uh follow the show on twitter facebook instagram and tiktok at hollywood hog pod become a supporter of the show at patreon.com slash hollywood hogwash go check out our best tv intro of all time 32 of the best ones and we picked a winner and it was fun and you get to watch the tv intros along with us it's really cool. That's it was right. a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to do. That's right. And then uh, next week, uh, we got to pick something. I mean, The Rock. I think we just picked it, right? It could be The Rock, but could be the rock. we'll could talk be about it. Point Break. We've only suggested it about four or five <laughs> times. Happy Independence Day, motherfuckers. Uh, we could keep doing uh, the Batman series. Haven't, cover haven't, haven't Batman we, Forever. Haven't we done them all? Oh, that's right. The Schumacher ones. I we do want to cover those. Batman Forever and Batman and Robin at some point. Batman also, and Robin would be fantastic. Aaron's never seen Batman and Robin all the way through, right? I haven't. I've that's only funny. seen clips. I, I've only seen the, the you know, freeze. Freeze. Cool, freeze, freeze ice. Ice. I mean, that would be that's, fun just because I get to do Arnold for the whole podcast. <laughs> that, yeah, I could just sit here and watch you do, <laughs> just watch you quote the movie. Yeah. But uh, yeah, all right, guys, have a beer. 
And uh, happy Independence Day. Go watch some fireworks or aliens exploding for fireworks. Happy 4th, guys. Feel better, Tim Clawson. 